Hi there. Happy to be participating in the OA Book Network's Mythbusters series. This is really important work. Uh, I think, frankly, we've all been a bit guilty of using simplistic language, but there are also a lot of constituencies who fear OA and have almost deliberately helped fan the flames of misinformation. So I'm glad this work is being undertaken. Before I start the debunking, let me give you a brief background about me. Uh, I'm John Scher. I'm the director of the University of North Carolina Press. This year, I also have the privilege of being the chair of the AU Press's Open Access Committee. Okay, on with the show. Here is our myth. This is written from the perspective of an author. Open access means that I can no longer receive royalties from my book. So this is a, there's a very short answer to this, which of course it's untrue, um, classic myth. There's no doubt that OA introduces a lot of new financial considerations that both presses and authors need to navigate, but there's no reason why presses, why authors should be um, financially punished by choosing OA. Uh, your digital royalty income will decline, but there's a whole suite of financial considerations at play here. So let's dig into it. First, let's step back and ask who normally gets royalties in the publishing business. It's pretty uncommon, as we all know, in STEM journal publishing. In fact, authors usually need to scrape together funds to get those uh, articles published. But in humanities books, most, most authors receive completely well-deserved royalties. Writing a book is a huge investment in time, uh, much more so than a co-authored journal article. Humanists and academic institutions frequently aren't supported financially as well as STEM faculty are. So when they write a book, they really deserve to be rewarded for that. And some books, even academic monographs, become very successful and sell thousands of copies. Authors absolutely deserve to be participants in sharing that success. But let's also think for a few minutes about what happens when a monograph is published OA instead of paywalled. There's usually some sort of subvention happening to the press. Programs like Knowledge Unlatched and Tome, which is toward an open monograph ecosystem, the NEH Fellowship Program, the Sustainable History Monograph Pilot I mentioned, these all have significant subventions with funds paid to the press to protect its risk in opening a book. But a big question swirling around right now is whether some of those funds should be going to the author as well to insulate them from their financial risk. In fact, the NEH program cleverly builds an author stipend into the program. At UNC Press, we actually increase the print royalty rates for authors who participate in OA programs exactly for that reason. Another question, and I, I can confidently say nobody knows the answer to this, is what happens to print sales when you have an open digital edition? It seems completely logical to assume that if it's available for free digitally that no one is gonna buy a print copy. This is where the myth comes from. There is a growing body of research to suggest that this probably is not true. We know that humanists prefer print to digital and many of them can still afford to build their own print collections. Students, if you take money out of the equation, definitely prefer print to digital. And let me leave you with a counterintuitive suggestion. What if OA actually helps to sell more print copies? Stay with me here. We're starting to understand better how readers engage, that it's not a binary choice. They're not digital readers or print readers. It's almost always both for academic monographs. And we know for sure that readers discover books digitally and then frequently pivot to print. That means publishers and authors shouldn't think of OA as something predatory that's gonna erode markets and revenues and royalties. OA makes digital discoverability very easy and opens up the possibility of creating new print customers that you wouldn't have had if you had paywalled barriers to digital discoverability. Look, I'm not prepared to say OA is gonna make authors wealthy, but in terms of dissemination and impact and equity and inclusion, and yes, even royalties, there's no reason why OA can't be a better choice. Thanks.